In today's video, I wanna take y'all through how we make these viral ASMR motion tracking sports edits in Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. What is up? Welcome back. Pete here. <laughs> what is up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Pete Gottschalk here, content producer at Major League Baseball. And like I said, I want to take y'all through how to make these ASMR motion tracking style edits that we've been doing all season at MLB. These are kind of hacks, if you if you call them that, in the way that they go on social. It just really intrigues people in the first couple seconds. There's multitude of factors that get people to continue watching these and it gets them hooked on them. And ultimately, they do really well on social and they're pretty simple to make. This edit style is very similar to kind of this Falcons edit, only with more emphasis on the sound. It's obviously not shot from the bird's eye perspective either. It doesn't have to be. So it's a similar process, but I wanna take y'all through how to design the sound. Obviously the motion tracking stuff, which I've explained before, but I'm gonna take y'all through that and then do more of an emphasis on the sound and the other things where I get the sound effects, how to mix the sound and stuff like that. We've done these throughout the season on like double plays, ground balls. My colleague Campbell Dunn has done a ton of these on TikTok and they've done really, really well. Whether it be pitching or infielders, they've done really awesome. So I just wanted to kind of share with y'all how we go about that. Without further ado, let's get into the editing software. Now we are in Premiere Pro. As I said, we're gonna be using this and then a combination of After Effects as well, but we'll get to that later. I have my project open. Make sure you save your project in your projects folder wherever you save them. Next, you're gonna to wanna to find a clip that works best for you. In this case, I'm going to recreate this viral edit that I made for Instagram and Ronald Acuna Jr. last year in the summer. And this is just a simple soul and bass shot, slow motion. If I speed it up, He's gonna be about real speed there. Simple shot, one of my more favorite ones of his stolen base this year because it was raining. You can do this same edit in other sports with you know, a basketball and you're gonna get a lot of good squeaking sounds, the net swishing, stuff like that, the ball hitting the ground. You can also do it in football with the football, you know, the impact of the, the ball into the receiver's gloves, uh, footsteps, anything really. So this isn't just a baseball thing. I, we've done it, like I said, with double plays, good defensive plays, stolen bases, home runs, you can do it with really anything. But in this case, I'm gonna be using this clip. So our next step here is to be creating a sequence and I'm going to do this wide. The final product here will not be a 16 by nine because I don't think that's the best way to do social uh, final edits, but I'll explain why I'm doing that later, if that makes sense. 16 X nine master edit. Now that we have that, I'm going to find a good spot on this clip to kind of drag it and start it in our timeline. Here we go. We're probably gonna cut it off at about there. Leave yourself some more room in case you're wondering. Zoom in on the clip, and you don't have to do this. I did the same technique in the Falcons edit. Speed it up to 500. It's easier for me to understand when this is real speed if your clip is native slow motion. Next, drag this part up so you're, you can see your keyframe whenever you do this. Right click your clip, go to show clip keyframes, time remapping and speed, click that. And now you have this little line and bar that is going to allow you to see the time remapped keyframes on this clip itself, which is just how I do it. You can do it in this section of editing too, or in this section of Premiere Pro as well. But to start here, I'm going to find the part where Ronald breaks and I wanna slow it down. So I'm going to do it right here. Since we sped this up to 500, we want to find what is back to the normal speed, which is our native slow motion. 100% is obviously a 20% of 500. There's some advanced videographer math for you. Drag it down to 20 and then drag this out. And this is gonna basically indicate how long it's gonna take for your clip to get from real speed, 500% sped up, back to its native 100. That's obviously pretty fast. I'm going to do it a little bit longer. I kind of like that. Let's just rewatch it, see what's up. And there we go. So I like that. I want it to be a little slow-mo for a couple seconds, but not too long. I'm going to now, when I get to a point where I want to start speeding it back up again, add a keyframe, speed it back up to 100, and we're going to do this slowly. We're going to drag this out big time. There we go. And there's our clip, we're back to real speed now, very slowly. I actually think it's a little bit long in the slow motion. So I'm gonna drag this whole thing to the right. It's 
three watts to speed. And I like that a little better. If you're exporting this for social, people have a short attention span. So just keep that in mind whenever you are doing this slow motion part. Don't make it too long, but also don't make it too short. Whenever you get this to a point where you like it and you think the timing is good, I would just give yourself some extra space on the back end and maybe the front end too. This is because you're about to nest that clip. So whenever you nest this clip, it's going to kind of match it to this sequence that we that create, created at the beginning. We need to do that so we can kind of scale in, scale out, and, and do other effects to it because you cannot combine a speed ramping effect with others. Right click this, nest it, and then do like 16x9 nested master. Now that you have this all nested and whatnot, this is where you bring After Effects in. Open your After Effects application. Make sure you start a new project. And then first thing you want to do is create a spot to save it. Save it in the same folder that your Premiere Pro project is in. I'm gonna title it again. This is my labeling structure. If you have any questions, let me know. It goes year, month, date, and then underscore tutorial ASMR. That is how we're gonna title this. Now we have After Effects open and we are going to utilize the dynamic link, which is what links you, you're able to work on these types of, of files and assets in other Adobe applications. You can do the same thing with Photoshop into Premiere Pro. To do this, right click your clip, replace with After Effects composition. And there might be some wonky frames in there just to keep in mind. Sometimes you might have to drag it one right. There is some issues with dynamic links still, but now as you can see, we have our pre-composed nested master and the clip if we double click it inside of Adobe After Effects. So we can utilize the stuff that, that After Effects has to help us take this edit to the next level. First step here is to go to the tracker, stabilize motion, and that is going to give you a track point. This basically will track the anchor point and other things onto wherever you set this. So some keyboard shortcuts to learn here are H and that'll allow you to bring up this hand tool and will allow you to drag the frame wherever you want so you can see. And then also V, which is your default kind of cursor. You can drag this. I'm going to motion track this on Ronald's head. And as he turns his head, this is gonna get a little harder. You wanna pick a point of high contrast. Whenever you get a good point, go over to your play button and this that will allow the AI after you hit this play button to track it best. And you're gonna have to stop and do this manually, of course. I explained this in the Falcons tutorial as well. It will be easy here. The more motion blur there is, the harder it's gonna be for the software. And then also the more movement in general that there will be, it's gonna be harder for the software. So as he gets running faster, it's gonna get harder and harder, just an FYI. Here we go, here we go, here we go. He's about to break. What I do here is you gotta keep your eye on it. So see, it's off his head right now. If you hit U, that'll bring up all your keyframes. You can hit plus, 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 zoom in a little bit go back a couple keyframes. You wanna keep it in the center of his head. So just move it manually, pick a common object. I'm gonna do his nose right here. And there you kinda of understand the manual process behind this. What I do is throughout the whole edit, I will kind of hit play, see how the software tracks it and go back and do it. But for now, I'm just gonna kind of speed this part up so we get through this tedious process. Whenever you get that to a point that you feel comfortable with, manually tracked, auto tracked, whatever, it's gonna be pretty arduous, but make sure you save your project and then hit apply. Make sure you're good to go, X and Y. And then you will see it is tracked. The next step in this process is to get rid of these kind of borders. See this right here? Whenever it tracks, we're gonna need to scale in a little bit. That's why when you are shooting this, make sure you shoot a little wider so you do have some room to scale in. 4K also helps. Again, you can hit U on your keyboard to bring up all your keyframes from everything. What I'm gonna do is hit S and make a keyframe for scale and then P for position. And then I'll be able to see those in here. Now, see how this starts right here? I am going to zoom this in in the scale just to get rid of some of that excess borders and whenever he breaks i'm going to zoom in to kind of create that alternate reality i guess if, if you want to call it that so whenever i find that frame at the bottom make another scale keyframe you're gonna have to mess around with this a little bit and then scale in 
Now keep in mind, whenever you are editing this, you're gonna want it, the final product will be in kind of a narrower format than this wide frame. So you don't really need to worry about this as much unless you are exporting it in a 16 by nine frame. I'm gonna do a four by five or nine by 16 vertical video just to optimize it for social. And also keep your, your, your subject in mind as well for that, that same aspect, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go here and kind of keyframe Ronald more into the middle before we start this whole process. And there we go. Now we have this whole thing keyframed. Again, if you want to export this into 16 by nine, make sure you're taking care of the edges of this frame here, but I'm going to do a four by five. So I'm not gonna pay attention to that. So once you get all of this keyframed in the 16 by nine, drag all of your scale and position keyframes and go to easy ease and just rewatch this, make sure it's good to go. The easy ease is just gonna make these keyframes a little more natural. Once we get that figured out, gonna go back into Premiere Pro and make a new sequence. And this is gonna be my final product sequence. So 4X5 final edit. Okay, now we have that in. What I'm going to do is take this linked Adobe composition, command C or copy it, and then paste it into my timeline. Now we have this in here, I'm gonna adjust the scaling. I'm going to start where I wanna cut it with a C, a little blade tool. You can do all of this in AE, but I like to do all my sound in Premiere Pro. It's just easier for me. Again, if you're a master at After Effects, go be it, go do it in there, but I like to do it in here. Now that we have this edit put into this type of sequence and after we keyframed it, motion tracked it, speed ramped it, whatever, it is time to do the sound, which is the most important part. I get my sounds through Epidemic Sound up here. This is just a couple of the things baseball wise they have. They also have like football stuff and whatnot. It's, it's up to you. There's a bunch of different sites you can get sounds from but I use Epidemic and here we have a couple effects. First off, I'm going to start with the zoom in and I'm going to do like a whoosh effect here. And that's gonna sound like we're going into the slow motion alternate reality. I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit and then I'm gonna take these dirt footsteps, which sounds perfect and just kind of single them out, if that makes sense. Hits the ground, I'm going to take a solo Footstep, just to paste this out and match them up. And then I'm gonna take my baseball slide effect and move that in here. And that is what the sound that I want to be emphasized. I'm gonna match this up with this, the slide. Now I'm gonna take this kind of cave atmosphere effect, which I know sounds weird, but it's gonna create this kind of, again, an alternate reality sounding thing. And whenever this zooms in on the whoosh effect, I'm gonna kind of fade this in. Sorry, whenever this speeds up, I'm gonna slowly get rid of this. And again, this is just you messing around with it. As it speeds up, I'm gonna get rid of this. Final step in this process is to get a kind of crowd effect noise. I'm gonna be using a Nat sound from another Ronald stolen bass earlier in the season, but you can go find one yourself, either online or epidemic sound, whatever, like a crowd roar effect, generic one. I'm gonna find this and cut it down and match it up. I'm gonna take this part at the beginning, speed it up, or sorry, up the, the gain to like 12. When that gets here, whenever I zoom in, I'm going to take Go to effects, low pass, drag that on. That's gonna make it sound a little muffled. Drag this back up to normal, the cutoff. Make a keyframe. Zoom in. Ding this down to a thousand. That's gonna make it really sound muffled. And then on our next one here, also drag this up. On the, put low pass on. Match this with your previous one. Fade the two audios together. And then, whenever this starts to speed ramp back up, make a keyframe on your new low pass clip. And you might need to play around with the timing of this. Bring this back up. Mess around with the timing, like I said, that is going to make it go back to normal. Export this out, and there you have it. Anyways, that 
concludes the video. I hope y'all were able to kind of get a better understanding of, of how this edit works, why it hooks people, how to make it, and everything like that. So if you do have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I also have an Instagram at Pete Chuck if you want to come check that out. I appreciate all of y'all. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll see y'all in the next one.